on behalf of igno regional center for chill we welcome each one of you for this open session cup enrichment session and the topic today is indian youth opportunities for empowerment and our speaker is dr tp shashikumar sir and uh, at the outset i request dr prasita krishnan to share about the innovation club activities and also the open uh, session and how it has a impact on uh, uh, creating digital resources for igno regional center project and we are also grateful to dr vp jaja kumari madam for introducing the speaker because uh, through madam only we got to know about uh, dr tp shashi kumar and we were uh, really grateful to the resource person for being with us and we thank you sir once again over to dr prasita mukherjee uh, we are very grateful to sir because he is a very busy person in spite of his busy schedule he has found time uh, to address all of us it's a great privilege uh, for us sir in fact let me talk something about the innovation club at regional center kochi uh, the innovation club at regional center kochi was initiated under the encouragement of the national center for innovation in distance education ncid which is at igno headquarters delhi the national center for innovations in distance education was established in december 2005 and it is a facility for promoting supporting reengineering and disseminating innovations in open and distance learning system in fact the ncid is a ground for nurturing bright and inquisitive minds whose ideas and explorations are ex uh, expected to develop the audience system to the needs of the gen next The goal is to develop a culture of continuous learning, new and innovative solutions to offer seamless education for all, achieve cost efficiency in its operations, and provide borderless access to quality education and training. In fact, under Regional Centre Coaching, a series of monthly lectures, identified as open session from enrichment session, have been held at Regional Centre Coaching since September two thousand eighteen. The sessions are usually held with an objective to enrich and generate awareness amongst the learners of Igno on a wide range of topics ranging from time management, career management, e-support services of Igno, entrepreneurial opportunities available, uh, innovations in ICT intervention in education, uh, entrepreneurial transformation for the conduct of education in India, uh, life skills for a successful living. and uh, effective uh, unleashing the power of effective communication and the last session which we had was on biofuels for a sustainable future hence uh, this uh, this is also a platform to resolve the students grievances with respect to the subject the student is pursuing in igno uh, so uh, as a part of the national youth day which is celebrated on uh, 12th of january we are celebrating this uh, youth day through this uh, talk session and uh, uh, this is basically this youth day is being celebrated by all organizations of the department of youth affairs in several di districts across india and uh, uh, as far as the uh, theme is concerned this, uh, the theme for the national youth festival present is my bharat vikshit bharat at the rate 2047 by the youth and for the youth so we are very grateful to sir for uh, for being with us on such a short notice uh, for this session and i wholeheartedly uh, uh, express our gratitude to him for the same now i request my uh, colleague dr vt jalaja kumar to introduce the speaker to the audience namaskar sir and with that pleasure and greatness i am uh, welcoming you to this session sir i think we people are very much blessed with you to have your uh, presence and your words as an inspiration for uh, value education at the same time a, a graceful life to lead a graceful life uh, with that introduction let me introduce dr tp shashi kumar sir to uh, all of you Uh, sir sir was i don't know what to tell what what he is not that is the issue 
because everything is related to our life so life is very important our uh, health mental health physical health our knowledge etc are being the most important part of our life and our vision that is why sir has taken his way to teach openly actually he is the uh, open educationist i think because we are open distance learning practitioners a bit more than that an informal way of open learning is going on from the side of the sir but prior to that sir was adorning a lot of positions that i have to tell uh, sir was a great space scientist educationist and uh, sir is a spiritual director motivation speaker author of many books and many papers more than that now each and every word of him is a book like experience is given to all the people who are listening to him like that his life goes on by look itself you can see that how spiritually bless, blessing uh, with a, a face of blessing he is having and uh, uh, this moment again i am uh, uh, sharing my happiness to that and sir was uh, professor and hod of a business administration at hyderabad and he was again working in ahmedabad as a space uh, scientist in space application center isr ahmedabad and sir was a scientist in advanced data processing research institute hyderabad and uh, in bangalore sir was program planning and project management of isro headquarters at bangalore sir was deputy director and general uh, the directorate of general security cabinet secretariat government of india new delhi and from there and before that uh, at my first uh, uh, at first i have seen him at uh, kerala sir was the academic uh, director and the director of academic staff college then it was known as like that now it is ugc hrdc uh, that was his uh, previous career before this uh, space scientist so in all the ways of his wisdom uh, i was shared in professional way after that sir he himself found his way uh, to give an open shiksha shiksha you know it is a sanskrit word it is education and now shiksha gnanam life learning residential ship camp that is mainly he is conducting a lot of camp all over the world i have to say that uh, that is what i would like to say and uh, now sir is located at uh, his gnanam uh, and sir is sitting in, in front of it at kannur uh, that is also a great scene to us so sir uh, on behalf of ignu regional center kochi i wholeheartedly welcome you sir uh, to deliver your speech and uh, your words thank you very much Namaskaram thank you um Jalaja Kumari for this beautiful introduction introduction to Ignu I was there in Ignu regional center uh, long back on a teachers training program today is a great day uh, basically because my inspiration for youth or probably I decided to be part of a social service taking motivation from the great soul of india the spiritual wisdom soul of india sri swami vivekananda swami vivekananda was a different man with a vision who could foresee when india is going to be independent even before the politicians started thinking about independence no politicians no congress people talked about uh, independence but vivekananda said 50 years from now india will be independent exactly 50 years the prediction came to true i was blessed to be part of vivekananda institute of human excellence in hyderabad almost 12 years morning and evening talking to youth that was quite accidental like i am i am 
facing people all across the globe only through some small references probably swami vivekananda had a great spiritual connection to the the whole india not individual to individual he had a great spiritual connection to the whole soul of india that's why probably in the whole world nobody would have told if you want to know the nation excuse me if you want to know india excuse me that was the word vivekananda told once you can get the kathal the essence the spirit everything from swami vivekananda what india is all of us take birth as individuals but individuals doesn't make a nation the concept of nation comes when the individuals transform themselves into a citizen the vyaktitva development that is most essential and that vyaktitva development happens during the youth time probably vivekananda understood this long long back though he predicted the independence of india he was also feeling india is not matured enough to become independent he said india has a great disease it needs to be treated well where did he get this inspiration for or the medicine for the treatment of india as a whole he has traveled all across india from corner to corner from the northeast he has reached the southwest of india the kanyakumari swam across the sea the rough sea of kanyakumari jumped on to the top of the mountain small rocky mountain and history must have written around that and then created that mountain as a monument which is now called vivekananda rock but that was a barren rock where people were not there enough to go where vivekananda stayed 3 days 3 nights 2 nights and 3 days that long stay the people who were not there enough to go and meet him at that rock was waiting at the seashore asked him what is that you were thinking he said i need to prescribe medicine for the disease of india and what is the disease of india that is tushni bhavam what is tushni bhavam all of us wake up wake up in the morning but we are not really waking up with the full spirit and energy and that time in which we pretend that we are sleeping is called tushni bhavam so vivekananda said the biggest trouble of india is this tushni bhavam every every person is up but we are not we are living but we are not living we are not living a life when we look back to our life we feel that we have not used every bit of my time we have wasted lot of our time thinking that we are living pretending that we are living but not living neither for the individual for the self nor for the family nor for the society nor for the nation so what are we doing we have to take this great message where if somebody has to put in one single line don't live like a smoke be like a fire and that was vivekananda each word which came from vivekananda was a spirit for the empowerment and that is probably the reason now the youth day is being celebrated in vivekananda's name the national youth day the indian youth the opportunities for the empowerment the topic given by ignu i am i must thank all the ignu officers regional director and those people who have taken interest in connecting with me like prasidha was talking to me the other day connecting me and referring jalaja for this session i understand i am talking to the institute or talking for the institute where people are enrolled for higher studies maybe i, I don't know the exact number maybe around 5 lakhs to 10 lakhs is the enrollment um, probably in um, ignu now i am also an alumni of uh, ignu my mba master of business administration is from ignu specialized in human resources 
and my um, thesis is very special because I did a knowledge management of ISRO. How knowledge of ISRO has to be documented perfectly was my thesis submitted to IGNO, which was pub ready to publish, accepted in the IEEE journal, in the International Journal. What we have is a lot of knowledge, which is not being recorded well. We have a lot of knowledge around us, a lot of educational institutions, IGNO being the largest university in the world in terms of enrollment, but I don't know in terms of output. I should not talk in terms of the output which comes sitting in the IGNO platform. But as a matter of fact, if you look at what is happening in the whole world, what is happening in India, in the new education policy, I must have given thousands of lectures being invited in different universities and academic institutions. Pathetically, we must say that nothing much is happening. Because we have the largest number of people flowing from India for education abroad. Where is the opportunity for empowerment? If 0.4 million people are traveling to US, Canada, equal number in all other countries together, and look at the merit of education being given by other nations, starting from probably Canada, New Zealand, Australia, up to South Korea. We don't come in the few number of institutions which probably once upon a time in the BC period before computers or before Christ, we were one of the best where we could give a lot of opportunity for the rest of the world to come and get educated. Now, our youth is migrating to the different part of the world because of two things. They are not too much keen on education, probably. They are too much keen on the job opportunities, the great living standards which they provide, the freedom which they have, the income which they get, the market in which they can explore themselves. And probably we must say that in India has a lot of inequalities which is still present. If it's I must have traveled all through the last one year, if you take it, I have gone through the northeast, southwest, to the northwest Punjab, to the north Shimla. All these places we see an entirely different situation. It is not that cool and calm as we think. I remember when 10 years back, India celebrated 150th anniversary of Swami Vivekananda. I released a book. And that book is called Raising of India by the Rays of India. That was released in Telangana, Bongir, where I had 112 students across the Pan India, probably from Hamirpur NIT to Kanyakumari. We had contributors who contributed articles. I got a student who is sitting in front of me who contributed an article, was also part of this organizing. Anusha is here with me. We found last approximately 60 articles I could put into the book form and release it on 150th anniversary of Swami Vivekananda. Now, today we have passed 10 years from then. My question to the youth of India through all the social media was that topic on which I am talking today, the opportunities for empowerment, the India youth. But my question was slightly different. My question to the youth was, give me a vision, give me a mission, give me an action. 200 sentences to be written, words to be written, probably write 100 words about mission and mission, vision and mission, and tell what action you are taking. Out of 120 articles, each and every article I have seen, everybody starts with a negative statement saying, India is not clean, I want to clean it. I made sure in this book there is no negative statement about India. I said, remove that. There is an opportunity for me to clean India. Don't tell that India is not clean. Right? If somebody says India is poor, I keep saying no. In, don't use the word India is poor. We, I want India to be more richer. Start from a positive thought. So what is lacking in youth today? I said 0.4 millions of people are traveling. 
we have got 40 million probably enrolled in india and in which if you look at the youth power is 60 percentage less than 35 age probably 60 percentage between 18 to 25 we have 50 percentage of the youth that means they are eligible for higher studies you ask them why do they want education do we have a real statement of purpose when they join for higher studies we should have a purpose i was executed director for an engineering college in between for two years in north kerala i only have circulated a small bit of paper and then asked them tell me what is that you want in your life where i am educating you to become a biltak in different subjects a small quarter paper I asked them write down what is that you want in life 99 percentage of the people gave the paper back because they have no aim that means we are leading a nation where those people are supposed to lead the nation tomorrow we are leading a nation where the youth is supposed to lead the nation tomorrow as leaders with no aim and no idea of why are they getting educated they have no idea why they wanted to become part of the nation building they have no vision they have no mission that means our basic education has failed in doing it the new education policy came into picture maybe in the next 10 years they will become youth tell me how many programs which are projected by new education policy which says informal education i know that i am talking to the institution which runs only higher education but understand the people reaching to higher education needs a strong base and it should start with the age three up to grade three minimum up to grade seven we are supposed to know me my life my neighborhood and the life around my neighborhood look at the syllabus and see whether it's really happening look at the number of cbse schools probably maximum number kerala it is very less only around 1200 but if you look at 20 percentage of our cbse schools are in the cities look at what is the syllabus they are being followed they keep saying ncert syllabus they follow and lkg ukg people also advertise keep saying cbsc school understand it's a daylight cheating being done by the education system cbsc is central board for secondary education it's a start from ninth class but a nursery student is also being tagged with the cbsc so what i've done not during the um, new education policy it's almost 18 years back i started a school a small school in kerala which is called the grandma child care shiksha gurugulam take care of children from age 3 to grade 3 for the development of their linguistic power language skills dr jalaja is a linguistic person i'm sure she will agree language skill need to be developed from childhood different languages not one any child up to age 3 can learn 7 8 different languages and arithmetic skill logical reasoning analytical skill interpersonal relationship all of them i wrote four books in the last month released in delhi this is only for teachers training program in the early childhood education and four books which are named from a to z the last sentence comes from said a to said divided into four books what does it talk about our youth have got a great role those people who wanted to get a lot of money probably education is one of the best business in india but today that is being done only in quota factory or crash course after plus two being preparing students for entrance examination a great daylight cheating being done if nobody has seen these two series one is the crash course and the quota factory on two amazon and netflix i suggest all of you to see that and see the pathetic state of education system being propagated in india 
who has to call who has to ring a bell against this i think the youth wanted to empower themselves get into education because i am talking to an educational institution i said education is a good business but do it very fairly but not like online programs but like interacting with the children teaching them this is one of the greatest teaching training programs for which i have authored a book it doesn't start from the youth development doesn't start if the manufacturer is not good maintenance cannot be good so there is no point in maintaining youth if from the pregnancy you don't do so this is a book authored for taking care of children from the pregnancy time so that the development of linguistics and the dna pattern comes very clear this is on the mental health i'm so glad that jalaja was mentioning about the psychological part which i do a lot of things and this is from age 3 to grade 7 that is where the normal education has to be understood and this is for teachers and the parents all these books will be available online and people can contact for the specific training programs on this this is what i am investing my time now on this the next book on uh, mental health is not printed yet that is for grade 8 to grade 12 so i'm sure those people who have got a great ability to understand any problem and understand the trick of solving this that is logical reasoning analytical skill mathematical ability language skill interpersonal relationship their intellectual emotional skills will be best why we are having problem of suicidal problems depression problems among the youth because our education system has not taken care of the emotional part of the students it's not that one psychology teacher is kept as per rule and then nobody consult with them or the psychology teacher teachers find difficulty in the teachers who are teaching mathematics probably because psychology teacher don't understand mathematics right so i think we must have a collaborative supplementary looking at problems sitting together i am under i am i am quite aware that it's a huge number of people who are enrolling in education system and you cannot make children to fail so people are being passed without even proper testing this is like somebody has a disease getting admitted to a hospital and the doctor refers to a higher doctor without even giving a primary treatment what will happen the normal disease become chronic disease so what is happening to the higher education system today most of the people who are coming to higher education are half cooked half baked and mentally handicapped people who don't understand the subjects that is why we have to really call for a drastic great change i'm sure ignu can do wonders because you have got your presence throughout india everywhere across the states therefore the central and the state government the tag of conflict between what is happening in education with uh, normally i think igno has got the um, 280 number of programs being run and it's one gigantic institute in which these sort of programs i'm sure have to call for a very very serious issue which this subject opportunities of for empowerment the empowerment not through education not through soft skill not through hard skill not through the emotional physical the yoga asanas what is lacking in the youth today if you look at the happiness index of india is too low that is because everybody is in a sad mood education itself has become a big burden because we are giving education we are giving knowledge without even telling what is the objective and scope i remember when i was become a student of ignu i found there is a beautiful two three pages written on objective and scope of which course i don't know which university course which school education has got beautiful writing at least i know how people have read it how many teachers are reading it we must have a very specific child care from then grade 3 to grade 7 education system have to be and understand the youth have got lot of potential opportunities for entrepreneurship by themselves so that the cbse syllabus can take care of the children who are all programmed for 
the development of the individual to the citizenship if you can make such opportunities for people they find education itself becomes a big business otherwise education doesn't become a business education be becomes a business for those people who are not connected to the problem unconnected unrelated people so i found a lot of opportunities through education i can list out different areas see for example we have got tourism programs if the general knowledge of a person is not good i remember when i was working as a management professor in hyderabad during the last viva oc after submitting all the project report and all that i was there for a viva oc and then what i did was i have got sometimes some jokes like this i asked one question to one student that was on january 25th the viva was happening on january 25th i asked the student he was an mba he was an mba student my question was what is special for india tomorrow that means on january 26th what is special for india the student have no answer you can imagine somebody gets a degree called mba even without knowing january 26th what is special because it's out of syllabus mba doesn't demand that knowledge you can still get an mba degree you can still get a btech that means our whole education system from the childhood doesn't reflect on the higher education what we get we have generally asked what is your background i strongly believe people have to remember their background not just the foreground degree what they get at the end if that is not there any formal degree which they get any degree which they get just becomes a stamp for getting a job which is quite useless sometimes so i am sure india needs another great example i'll tell you uh, for a viva same mba what i did is i drew the map of india and then given and then asked locate where is delhi and where is bombay the student is not able to locate where is delhi and where is bombay in the map that means you have no general knowledge no general knowledge about the indian geography you can see my book on civil service prelims and book i also have got some students aspirants who comes to me and then i guide them through that you you can see some of the youtube videos very specifically on only civil service guidance very specifically on how to read newspaper what is lacking in the india believe that five years back there were a lot of newspaper stands available here and there you could pick up newspapers but today i have driven at least 10 kilometers around the city you don't see a newspaper stand that means people don't even read newspaper there are no people who have habit of reading newspaper you imagine a student of ignu assume that when you come for the viva ask them one question when did you read your last newspaper reading when it was i am sure they will have no answer they will say no we never read a newspaper imagine for whom if we have no feeling for the society how can a human being be called a social being the habit of reading newspaper the concern about what is happening around my world is lost yeah tv programs are fantastic we have got lot of entertainment programs look at how many hits are there on news or how many channels are there on which real education happens you know also have got a i was part of consortium for educational communication i was trained there to create multimedia programs those all the dd dedicated for education have no viewers and we have to close it most of the igno programs ugc programs most of the cec consortium for educational communication programs where the education is given through that television has been closed don't tell this this is because the internet came and people are able to access internet would internet would have come tv would have been gone tv would have come books would have gone but still people are there who reads newspaper and books so those habit we are not able to inculcate in the youth all books are quite useless today so unless and until we make children to write reviews about books make them to understand 
everything what they listen what they hear soon after this lecture if nobody is able to make a gist of what happened during this discussion and send it to me as a note on my telephone number searching my name dr tps and somebody says oh i heard you on 2024 on youth day i i will tell them you are useless because soon after that you don't even know how to communicate communication skill is not giving lectures communication skill is responding responsive citizen it is not reactive citizens it is not reaction it is not action it is response so what is that youth to be empowered the youth is to be empowered for responses responses on what is happening around if there is a response for happening around to happen i am sure you must open your eyes to the newspaper you must open your eyes about what is happening around the world the other day i was seeing a small video on which a monkey is being caught in a place and trying to escape it's a beautiful video the video is almost 20 minutes but imagine somebody is using a mobile phone to record that program instead of saving the monkey the 20 minutes beautiful video you see the youths the youth thinks that it is a scope for him to produce a video get maximum number of hits and through which he can earn a little probably his instagram has got maximum hits it's pity it is pity if you don't have that humanness inside you so i talked about social being and i am talking about human being being human human being that is more important otherwise we are like two legged animals like a human being somebody is moving so we have to have a physical strength which gives happiness externally internally emotionally have a strong brain to understand so physical emotional intellectual and the social with today is the day of swami vivekananda who is a great spiritual being he lived only few years but those few years he doesn't take much time to read a book just open a book go through this and then he will say ask me questions i can answer that was his intelligence it is not because of intelligence the spiritually connected to the poet who writes poems we are from kerala we are writing or talking about this i am contributing the um, my youtube from my great friend a very senior friend nn menon from cochin who is describing bhagavad gita in malayalam which is kunnikutan tamburan's translation there is a great saying about kunnikutan tamburan's poetical aspect the poetical aspect of kunnikutan tamburan is if any sanskrit poem is given if half of the book is rotten and then lost the half book is only given and the half lines are missing kunnikutan tamburan could just fill it up and people used to wonder when they see the original and compare it with the what is contributed by kunnikutan tamburan is exactly matches and then if somebody asked him once how could you do this then he said poets can think only in one line so i'm sure that is the greatness of the poets which we had now today chat gpt started writing poems the chat gpt started writing paragraphs the essay is being written by somebody book is being written by somebody i am so proud and glad that i have published my poems before chat gpt came otherwise i am sure if i write a poetry somebody will say you have made chat gpt to write it right so this happens you have to reflect you have to be highly creative every human being have got a great ability to understand life and the rhythm of life the enjoyment of right life the rhythm of life can be enjoyed with all the raga tala bhava only when you live in the nature with the nature stay with the people who are creative it's a great satsang which make people to think entirely different i'm sure this can happen with few people with few initiative and that is why i left my job and came back to my village and today 12th it's a great day we start with a small camp we have got the 10 10 10 15 15 people here 
we stay here one one week and that one week what we do is we explore what do we explore explore the creativity explore the joy explore the knowledge explore the society explore the culture all these different fingers five fingers physical emotional intellectual social spiritual connected to the root of each one of us if we can find the root of each one of us i am sure there is a kadal and that kadal is that enjoyment which is in the stream which runs through the generations with the name of the river being same connecting different geographical positions geographical places the water is different the name of the river is same same similarly india is a great concept india is a nation it's not a country every individual youth who runs as water drops in this great nation india must understand i am taking the spirit of nation as the great swami vivekananda had the spirit of india within him if we can imbibe a little bit of that spirit i'm sure our life has got a purpose we believe that we have lived otherwise what will happen is one day i will also die my dead body also will be kept on the firewood as per the ritual my son is supposed to fire my dead body because all fathers will fire the children in the life they get a chance to fire us back the last while they fire they ask a question what is that you have done in your life kritam smarami tell me what is that you have done it is not that i produced you it is not that i kept three houses for you to live it is not that i gave bank balances to you that every animal can do every bird can do every small creature can do but what extra human being, being can do i am quite useless if i am not useful for the society i am quite useless if i am not useful for the nation as a together so understand there are great things to be learned the opportunity for empowerment is learning the spirit of nation the being the youth of our life the being the youth for my generation to come nyan paadi devam paadi there is a saying in malayalam nyan paadi devam paadi devam is not ishwara devam is my generations what my father has given is half of me this house is not built by me it's my father all the trees around me is not planted by me my father he has not planted this thinking that he will eat the fruits of the coconut generations are enjoying it the well water is not for him it is for generations to come understand every youth has got this potential to understand my kritam my karmam is not for me so while i am being fired in my graveyard it is not that my son is not knowledgeable that this dead body cannot answer he is well aware that this dead body cannot answer the question it's actually for the youth the young people where the generation goes my generation as a youth i must remember i got a responsibility to leave something for the society so that i remain here my work has to be not selfish not for me not for my family not for my neighborhood my contribution has to be something for the whole society think what is that you have done in your life it is not for my family and for me it is not for the salary which i am paid i contributed back to the institute no what is that you have done beyond your institution what is that you have done beyond your job what is that you have done beyond your family that is what is counted by real action karma in bhagavad gita is not your day to day affair of making idli and sambar it is what is that you have done for the society as a whole and that is what is to be taught the indian spirituality the indian concept of environment the indian scientific heritage which talks about the science of life the indian heritage which talks about the art of life life is not just living live in full enjoyment that's why all my books have got title called the life live in full enjoyment learn in full enjoyment living is an investment for future earning every bit of my life 
i must live with full happiness and learning is most essential because l e a r n learn after learning you cut the l you get earning money will come the youth must get opportunities to learn as best as they can as the great quality which they can so that the whole world feels that the education in india is great the product needs to be the quality test for other people to understand the producer is good if i make a pickle bottle somebody can taste and then say oh the producer is a good producer each student who goes out of india must be tested by the other nations and say indian education is great so that they can send their children here india becomes great not when indian people go abroad and collect money and send it to india i am sure a generation from now the next two generations indian people will not come back to india there are a lot of countries in which the houses have been just abandoned you imagine kerala 50 percentage gets abandoned houses where orders are living in different parts of the world imagine the youth goes from here to different countries and all their parents also get settled 50 percent of jobs in there the same thing is going to happen in punjab i've been recently to punjab you will see on the advertisements of canada settle in canada migrate to canada settle in us migrate to us that has become the just one word for every one of us i'm sure indian education should become strong india becomes a logger guru the master of the world only when the world comes to india to learn for which the technology provides lot of opportunities the strong base in the root provides lot of strength and courage use this together to make india more strong and i am sure being 60 percentage of the indian population 1.4 billion out of which probably the millions of them who are around us have got a great responsibility of taking shoulder the 600 million people between the age 18 to 25 who are being arrested in the higher education rooms i keep saying the teachers are the soft warden in the and educational institutions are jails they are just being put to there but the output product need to be more furnished so that the opportunities are not going out the opportunities are created here unfortunately our the rate of the increase in the production of children have reduced but the fertility rate probably is coming less than 1 percentage 0.98 percentage or so but for the next 20 years youth population will be around 50 to 60 percentage so the one generation we have a great responsibility so after that we don't know what the world comes generally we talk about 21st century education so recently i wrote a book in which i also reflect in most of my books the word called the 321 world if you look at it i use the word 321 world why is it 321 world it is not 21st century education it is third decade of 21st century we cannot talk about centuries long education system there is no 21st century education there is only third decade of 21st century with that third decade of 21st century the youth with that fast mind they are much faster than all of us fast mind they can do wonders pranams and salute and namaskaram to all of you for patiently listening i think i spoke almost an hour that's good enough less than an hour if there are some questions on interaction required i'll be open for all of you to answer if at all i have got some good questions to answer i'll be more glad than speaking good enough jalaja kumari good enough prasida do you want something else you could ask me And uh, sir, uh, because what uh, 
one psychic thing which I felt uh, during your talk was you have to be aware about the surroundings. That is something uh, which the youth of today uh, should imbibe in them that uh, you have the surroundings, you have to be aware and you must do something uh, to, uh, for the betterment of our society uh, as a whole. Not only, uh, especially what you said, the primary education, which is so very important. Uh, and a quick focus, I'm sure, about the new national education policy would definitely be given in that matter. And I'm sure in the years to come, uh, whatever uh, you have thought for and whatever you are saying, I'm sure uh, this will be shown. And I'm sure the youth will take inspiration from your words as well, sir. So thank you so much once again. And I would uh, just uh, request our regional director, Dr. J.S. Dorothy Madam, also to kindly give her something, sir. <coughs> Uh, we are very really grateful uh, to Sir for giving uh, uh, this uh, various personal experience integrated with today's topic. And the take home message what we uh, have we, uh, really created some more uh, uh, motivation for each one of us as we move through our lives. That is what uh, I want to uh, submit as a gratitude and uh, uh, for what we have been listening. Uh, to the uh, and friends, we also take this opportunity to share about that new programs uh, are also available in Swayam portal and uh, as courses, individual courses, and uh, the, the admissions for new programs are currently open. And as Sir was uh, talking, I just to take our small life skills from this how we are going to treat our life and how we are going to. Our life matters from what we have been perceiving so far. So, are we really going to be get stuck, or it is going to give each opportunity to move ahead? And I will, uh, my, one of my favorite thoughts for action is when we drive, generally we see a dead man and we get stuck to seeing it itself. But when we go near it, there will be opportunities for, to, for us to take uh, uh, either a left or a um, uh, right. Or sometimes we may get a small bend and then it will reach to the next plane. And we also uh, have seen so many opportunities in our life uh, which we have been missed. So is there uh, any another opportunity? Yes. But how we are going to perceive it matters a lot. And uh, we, it is always talked about um, a donkey owned by a owner, and as it grew old, the donkey was thrown into the uh, pit by the owner. But the donkey was so optimistic, and he thought that uh, every time the mud was thrown on it, it shook up and then it climbed up. And at one point of time, it could see the owner eye to eye, and he said, I know you would have saved me by mistake because you have uh, become old by mistake you have uh, put me into the pit. So how are we when we are facing difficulty seeing uh, the situation? Are we able to appreciate there is some other opportunity at our difficult situation? And do we really consider uh, the situation in an optimistic matter? That is a small uh, life skill which we want to uh, integrate in today's uh, program as we listen to various uh, thoughts of action from personal experience of the resource person. And remember, friends, every day. <laughs> Actually, when Sars uh, are hearing Sars' words, I think a tsunami of thoughts comes out. 
and uh, always that was my feeling today also like that i am thinking that uh, nowadays sir was telling that about tushni bhava that is why swami vedanta was telling utishtada jagrada prapya varan nibodh yeda like that now administrators and the soft jailers soft wardens of our, uh, uh, jails they are always competing to do to show kids what they have done and with that all foolishness uh, they are satisfied and uh, they are not at all thinking what is happening with that foolishness around this what the uh, things happening everywhere especially in uh, education institutions even among teachers uh, actually that is the tushni bhava from not only at morning from morning to evening and always they are uh, uh, in the same way i think malayalathil oru sollunde urangunavane unartha urakam nadikkunavane unartha pattilla ee oru avasthayum nammude oru valiya oru kalpam aanu kaarku aarolum parayan pattatha oru sthiti i think i i know sir sir does not want to hear any negative but this is not negative this is a fact i think uh, uh, our vision on education when we are hearing such words definitely people may have an inspiration to become something or to do some good actually that is the effect of this uh, reminder uh, which is given through the celebrations of such great people and that celebration is being done uh, by the inspiration and words of such great people itself like sir Uh, i am very much grateful to you sir for hearing all these things let me ask you one material question means a reality question about uh, our national education policy sir we are introducing this the udc was launching for your uh, undergraduate program fyu so you think that the four year degree program will make an uh, a light Uh, it will throw a light among the youth uh, in a research or in mind or uh, such a practice sir do you believe like that see opportunities jalaja kumari your concern is really correct opportunities comes it comes and goes the attitude is not changed opportunities will come and go you will not even see them so i believe any action comes performance happens this is dr dps formula yeah. performance p is equal to action a or attitude a plus opportunity o plus skill now you create a new education policy the early childhood education has to be informal but you tell me how many teachers are aware of this in practical sense how it is to be implemented on the ground still they are following ncert syllabus no change i have visited maybe hundreds of schools yes in the last one year see how they implemented new education policy no where it is implemented they still call and then write that new education policy is implemented textbook is same teacher is same parents are same students are same classroom is same no change in their pattern at all somebody has to have that courage that courage is the attitude you have skill or skilled people are there who can make others also skillful but where is the opportunity now the opportunity has to come along with attitude opportunity o plus attitude a can create the sufficient skill yes then the change will happen and the performance will happen in a different style so government can create only policies ngos can create skill the attitude should come from generations that has to come through education see i don't know how many people in india would have heard about what is called um, de schooling yeah de schooling is a great thing which happened almost 50 years back in america it took 50 years not to implement it they said we don't want education in the schools at all let children learn from the society that can be thought only when the parents are educated 
India, we don't have parents who are educated where they can give sufficient education to the younger children. So my grandma child care shiksha gurugulam. If somebody is interested, look at YouTube. You have got a lot of discussions, small small places where it is being implemented. Their sharing of experience. I go there for training people, conducting small workshops here and there as an individual, not as an institution. So if you look at grandma child care shiksha gurugulam, what I have done is no classroom barriers. Age three to grade three in same classroom. No textbook, no writing, no letter, no pen, no pencil. But you will be out when you reach third grade with at least six languages, good interpersonal relationship, lot of mathematical skill. Everything will be there, and you can challenge anybody. The child feels that I have to learn, not that the parents or the teachers feel that you have to learn. You tell me, Jalajam. In the early childhood education, the nursery. What is the maximum number of used words by teachers? I'll tell you. It is keep quiet. We are asking our children to keep quiet. Is it that our education system should tell? We must ask the young children to shout. I I tell you, come to my camp. A violent child will become silent. A silent child will become violent. We have both. we need to transform children what is most essential is transformation a child has to be transformed from the home to the society that will happen through learning your life why do you want london bridge is falling down still to be learned london bridge is falling down 200 years back it would have been fallen down now you ask the teacher who teaches london bridge is falling down where is london bridge Look at London Bridge, Doctor DPS on YouTube. I am explaining. London Bridge is not in London; it is in Arizona, in America. How many KG teachers know this? How many educators in India know this? How many CBSC principals know this? See, what we do is we are closing our eyes and then seeing the whole blind world. Inside each one of us, there is a guru. Open up the guru is the guru's job. opening up that inside teacher is the original teacher's job and that gives him knowledge nanam that is why my house name is nanam that nanam is where you get that kajal you open your eyes with a lot of creativity lot of opportunities will come opportunities are there you are not creative we get not skilled people you tell me how many people are skilled in your village you will see very hard to find somebody who is skilled we have a ma english but they can't even speak they don't even know the grammar because ranan martin is out of syllabus in my childhood i have learned ranan martin being a mathematics student i taught ranan martin you tell me how many phd's in english knows all the 12 tenses this is what our education system is you can be a educator you can be a teacher without being at least learning the basics So London Bridge is falling down. You don't know where is London Bridge now. It has fallen down. Are you thinking critically? Why do you want to look at pine tree when no pine tree is around you and your textbook doesn't have jackfruit tree? That is why a locally changed syllabus or no syllabus. The teachers, parents, grandparents, the senior citizens in your village come together. play with the children so that they get lot of education about their life and their life around their life it's like a family getting together for a marriage three generations mixed together can we have such a informal education for children i am sure the next generation will become much more wiser much more knowledgeable much more human much more social that is what our great educators i don't know how many of people have read my india my eternal india book by swami vivekananda my india my eternal india in which only 13 pages on education his dream about education i must have read it 100 times but i did not understand a bit of it it's such a tough english he uses fabulous english such a tough understanding of what india needs my india my eternal india look at i don't know how many new education policy makers the so called great people learned from philippines and german and all that no did they read swami vivekananda's education policy 
unfortunately i have to say they are unfit unfortunately i must say he was my boss when he was in space department he must not have touched with his hand a small child in a lkg classroom you must have that humanness it is not political appointment with the credibility of writing syllabus and taking copy from different country that should not be our policy policy should come from every village we have got a grama sabha being planned in the decentralization which came in the economic development patterns in the kerala my brother was one of the architect of that concept why not education system should have such a policy in which every village have got a different education system no same syllabus throughout india i have been traveling to different part of india i am sure jharkhand cannot follow what kerala is following yes so each parent each society each culture have got a different but as a nation we need to cross cultural dialogue should happen so it should not be conferences it should be unconferences don't look at one centralized team every people should come a different team should happen our education system has get just filling up the time 365 days 200 days working days in which we have got all the different activities like i was there in america in one of those schools i was so happy to see they have sports day they have annual day they have culture day they have also religious day they learn different religious practices they speak to different religious practitioners ask lot of questions i was there to answer to them as part of a hindu expert and we had both sides sitting christian sikhs muslims all the different uh, religious people and children have a lot of questions do you think our children of 8th grade 9th grade i must have gone to millions of students i must have addressed going to 10000 of schools i have not seen a student asking bright brilliant questions today because we taught to them keep quiet don't ask questions do we have a generation who have got lot of questions to the seniors tell me how many professors have got students who ask lot of questions to them i wish i have got some students around me all the time asking lot of questions so that i can think and what my guru has taught can be transformed into some knowledge to the next generation no very hard to get very hard to get this is what is required as empowerment opportunities are plenty we have got lot of knowledgeable people we have got lot of requirement of skilled people but we don't find a carpenter who is skilled we don't find a plumber who is skilled nothing this is what is happening so our education system should look at what is exactly required produce them produce them as skilled people with an attitude attitudinal change is must yeah still I, still i remember uh, the words of you sir uh, 6 70 years back an msc physics holder who doesn't know how to fit a bulb which is uh, uh, fused true true I remember yeah <laughs> that's a bad we have btech who doesn't know how to open a computer can be a btech computer we can have electric uh, btech or mtech a professor of M uh, electrical engineering who doesn't know how to open his own switch box correct this is what is happening thank you very much sir. yeah yeah good afternoon sir namaste oh. because of ignore uh, ignore center kuchi so i thankful to dr tp sakti kumar for the deputy director and director of central Our security government secretary, Dr. Lee, for everyone in this lecture, which is uh, very good to inform us, he has a lot of the ignition points. So, ignite, igniting the minds is a very remarkable uh, skill which has been done by the former Vivekananda. So, I think. This lecture was very good informative towards our students and also participants. So I thankful to sir. 
and also i thankful to uh, my colleagues dr prasida unnikrishnan and dr jalaja kumari for arranging this lecture and also i thankful to my regional director uh, to supporting to arrange such a great lecture in the in the regional center for our learners so which will be effective for changing their activity uh, activity as well as attitude of the learners so that is a very important so education purpose is very very important uh, that should be ensured by the teacher this has been highlighted by the, our uh, uh, speaker and i thankful to all our regional center staff thank you thank you very much Thank you so much for hosting me, and uh, it was a nice. Um, lot of people must have heard, and I'm sure it's getting recorded, and it will be transmitted. I also recorded; it will be on my YouTube very soon. So big salute! My my video is not coming, I guess, right? Yeah, video yeah. is not coming, but we are recording it, sir. It is I'm, recording. I'm I mean, we will share it to our YouTube link, and we will share the link to our other regional centers all over India, sir. Because thank you, thank you so much, much. Dr. Jalaja. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, Cochin Regional Center, for hosting me. So kind of you. Thank you, sir. Thank so you. kind of you, my director, all the uh, senior people who communicated with me, all of you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Goodbye. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Goodbye.